Hello, everyone, and welcome to our weekly live video. I'm Andrew Dalton, the Executive Director of the Adams County Historical Society in Gettysburg. I'm joined tonight with uh, my colleague, Tim Smith, a historian and licensed battlefield guide who's been with the Adams County Historical Society since 1990, I believe. So uh, we are happy to, to be with you once again. I hope everyone's doing well, and uh, we're excited about tonight's program. Uh, we are going to be going through our new website and sharing with you some of the digital tools that we've made available for you to help when you're doing research at home um, or you know when we're back in business. Uh, you can use these tools as well to supplement what you'd be able to find at the Historical Society. Uh, so we wanted to start. Uh, I'm going to go back to our PowerPoint here. Oops, here we go. Um, so we wanted to, to start um, by talking a little bit more about the Adams County Historical Society um, and uh, what we offer. Uh, so I um, just want to make sure our PowerPoint is up on the screen. Um, yes, it is. Uh, so um, the Adams County Historical Society actually uh, was formed originally in 1888 by prominent uh, Gettysburg citizens. Among them, uh, some names you probably are familiar with, Edward McPherson, a famous legislator um, and Adams County resident uh, owned the McPherson or McPherson barn on the battlefield, um, as well as David Wills, whose house is very famous as uh, the, the site of uh, Lincoln's uh, bedroom when he stayed here uh, in November of 1863 to deliver uh, the remarks uh, that would become famous um, at the Soldiers National Cemetery. And then other people you may know, um, Edward S. Breidenbaugh from the Gettysburg College, a well-known professor, John L. Hill, a local dentist, um, Samuel Russell, uh, and J.W.C. O'Neill, a local doctor who was instrumental in uh, recording Confederate burials on the battlefield uh, after uh, the armies had left. So lots of prominent local uh, individuals uh, involved with setting up our organization. Um, we're very proud of, obviously, the very long history. Um, we're, you know, we're one of the oldest historical groups in Gettysburg, and this is uh, the original minute book that you're looking at here on the screen from the Adams County Historical Society. And uh, of course, uh, we have in our collection um, multitudes of, of different types of records, artifacts, photographs, um, you name it. And uh, we don't have an exact count, but we know that the total amount of materials in the ACHS collection is over a million. Um, and you can see here we have uh, um, hundreds of uh, archival boxes shown uh, with various uh, items within. We try as much as we can to purchase archival supplies, keep everything safe and uh, secure. Um, and you can see a lot of that here, as well as a, a library, a large library of books, uh, ranging the topic from local history, family history, um, everything, uh, including the, the Battle of Gettysburg and the Civil War, of course, as well. We have a large library of, of uh, books uh, dedicated to the, the Battle of Gettysburg. Um, so the Historical Society also has artifacts, as I mentioned. We have, uh, as you can see in the picture, uh, some early Pennsylvania rifles or Kentucky rifles, as they were known. Uh, tons of relics turned in by local citizens after the Battle of Gettysburg, including you know, artillery shells, uh, uh, bullets and uh, other materials, bayonets, uh, you know, um, rusted sword blades, anything you can imagine that was picked up on the fields and in the town after the battle that were eventually donated to the Historical Society. Um, so we're going to move on. And you may wonder uh, if you are not, are not too familiar with the Historical Society, what we're all about. Uh, we are um, a nonprofit organization. We have about a thousand members from all over the country. Uh, I think by last count, we have members in 40 different states. Of course, there's a heavy concentration in southern Pennsylvania and Adams County, as you can see from the map here. So um, we are always working to keep everything uh, preserved and accessible, available to you. And we have some very exciting plans for the future to open up a, a new museum in Gettysburg with um, uh, a proper place to house all of these uh, collections and make them even more available to you. So uh, we'll be informing you more of that as plans develop, uh, but I hope you'll take an opportunity uh, to, to make a small donation. Uh, you can click the donate button on our post here tonight. If you're enjoying the program, it goes a long way to help us continue to put these programs on every week. So uh, without further ado, um, I wanted to turn it over to Tim now to discuss a little bit about what we're going to be going through tonight um, on the website and, and how you can do research uh, from the comfort of your own home. Uh, you don't actually have to be at an archive to do research. Uh, you, can, you can do a lot, especially 
nowadays uh, from uh, websites like ours and more famous websites like Ancestry and Family Search and Find a Grave that you may be familiar with. So let me turn it over to Tim and I'll check in with the questions and see if we have anybody um, asking questions so far. We do have a uh, number of resources on our website to aid people in doing local um, research. You know, we get three kinds of people coming in to do research or three primary uh, topics of interest that people come in to do research on. We get genealogists. We get people who are interested in their family tree. And, uh, you know, it could be uh, somebody starting their family tree who doesn't really know who their grandparents or great grandparents are, or it could be a seasoned researcher that's been researching their family tree for years and want to see what new information it can find by coming here. Of course, people live all over the country that have relatives that were or ancestors that once lived in uh, Adams County. So genealogy is probably our, bed, our bread and butter and probably the main uh, type of research uh, that we do for people when they come in. And then of course, we also have people that come in to do research on property. Now, we did a whole little webinar on um, you know, researching your property in Adams County. So um, our, that was one, something we did uh, last month, I believe. And uh, you know, that uh, particular uh, aspect of, of research um, is a little more uh, difficult, but we have tax records and um, deed records. Some records are from the county. The county and the historical society uh, are very close and they have made their records available to us to make available to researchers over the years. And then the third type of researcher that uh, comes into the historical society is researchers who are interested in a historical topic. Now that topic could range anywhere from uh, the Mount Joy meteorite uh, to um, Thaddeus Stevens to the Battle of Gettysburg. Um, and of course, since the battle was fought in Adams County, we have a large amount of resources that pertain to that national event. So we have vertical files in our collection that have a large um, uh, a variety of topics dealing with uh, all kinds of historical aspects of the county. But there are the three different types of researchers we, we tend to uh, have come to the society. Thanks, Tim. So yeah, I guess uh, what we'd like to do next is go to um, a tab on our website. Uh, if you haven't visited our website, it's www.achs-pa.org. You can find us if you just type in Adams County Historical Society um, in your internet browser. Uh, but we have a special tab on our website called Our Holdings. Um, and on this page, we have about 25 finding aids uh, for different collections and also some databases that we've made available. Um, and we wanted to kind of go through these things. And for those of you who have uh, relatives, uh, ancestors from Adams County or are interested in Gettysburg history or Adams County history more generally, um, we, uh, we, uh, we have this page set up and we hope that you'll be able to take advantage of it um, over the, the next few weeks when you may have a little extra time to do research. Um, so let's, without further ado, I, I want to start with probably the most ha uh, helpful um, link that you could find here on this page, and that is a uh, something that we're very proud of, which is a, a link to about 20,000 photos and records that we have made available uh, through a database called Past Perfect, which is kind of our, our organizational database for all of the records that we have in our holdings. Um, things are cataloged when they arrive at the Historical Society. Sometimes though, um, you know, we don't, it's like the collection is so big that we can't catalog it all right away. Um, and so that's where finding aids come in and they're more useful. If you've got a large collection, you can just describe it and not go to every item and write a description of it. Uh, but for a lot of items, um, I think we're up to about 60,000. We do have an individual catalog record for every single item. Um, and uh, these are cataloged on the Past Perfect and 20,000 of them, uh, mostly our photographic collection is searchable um, on this page of our website. Um, again, you can find it through the Our Holdings tab. So I wanna just uh, show you what a search here looks like. If, you, if you're on the home page of this site, you wanna click Advanced Search. Um, and then you can type in a search term. So since Tim is on our John Burns biographer, why don't we search 
John Burns, the hero of Gettysburg, a civilian hero who joined the Union Army, was wounded several times. And you can check in our collection and see what we have that pertains to John Burns. Now, notice how we used quotation marks around John Burns to make sure that we didn't just get results that said John or Burns. We want that phrase together, John Burns. So there's 35 items. And on this catalog, you can actually look um, at the photo, um, not in high resolution, but you can get a pretty good image of it with a, with a watermark to see uh, whether it's something that is interesting to you for your research, um, or you know, if you're an ancestor or a descendant of John Burns, you can see a picture here of your ancestor. Um, and we highly recommend that uh, if you have any uh, local ancestors, or even if you're just interested in what the town of Gettysburg once looked like, you can plug in a search term like Baltimore Street, um, and you'll be able to see all of the historic photos, images, and documents that we have cataloged in our collection. Um, like I said, though, with a million items and only 60,000 cataloged, you know, you're only searching a small portion of our holdings, but um, 60,000 is still a lot, and, you know, uh, you're very lucky to you're, you're, you're uh, very likely to find something that applies uh, to your search. So here's the picture of the compiler office on Baltimore Street. Um, here's a picture of a pastry shop, I believe. Uh, the Ruining family is that right, Tim? Ruining. <laughs> Ruining, yeah. We know some uh, relatives of that family, I believe. Um, and uh, here's a picture of, of the Jenny Wade House, or a, rather a, an early illustration, maybe not so early, but an illustration of the, the Jenny Wade House. So you can find just about anything you could imagine um, through this database. Again, it's the past perfect tab. And I'm going to try to monitor the questions here. If we have um, uh, any questions coming in, please feel free to drop us a question. Do we have any records from the Adams County Alms House? You want to take that one, Tim? Um, I do believe yeah, uh, we have a few original records and registers of the Alms House, and we also have uh, on microfilm and also printed version copies of Alms House records. So um, there was a register from the early Alms House records that was found at the Alms House before it was torn down near in the early 1960s, and um, it was donated to the Historical Society, and there was one donated to Gettysburg College, and someone who went through them and did make an index of some of the names in the index. For instance, you know, since we were talking about um, uh, things that I've researched, uh, Jenny Wade's uh, mother, Jenny, and her sister, Georgia, are in the Alms House Register. Uh, she's pregnant, and so the whole family is in there for a short time. They also, the Alms House gives outdoor relief, so, uh, uh, if you, you don't have to be in any arms house, but if you're poor and you need some help, they'll assist you with some money and that's recorded in the register. So there are some records. There's a, a really interesting, more modern booklet from the arms house that we have in our collection from around the early 1900s. And it tells you the people who are in there and when they were uh, admitted to the arms house and if they were transferred and, or if they died at the arms house. And also it tells you why they're in the arms house. And we, uh, I found that very interesting because it gives like uh, the, the disease, whether, you know, somebody's in there because they're insane or because they have a disability. Because the Alms House is kind of a, a catch-all place for people who are poor, women who are pregnant, uh, people who are homeless, people who are insane. So it, it's a very interesting um, collection. And we, yes, we do. That's not on our website, the Alms House Register Index, but it's something we do have. Right, and we've got a couple other questions I wanted to address real quick, and then we'll get right into the, the meat of this uh, page here on the website. Um, someone's asking, Kathy's asking, are there plans to make the other records available? Yes, and we are on constantly cataloging, digitizing, and creating finding aids. We're doing as best we can with a, a very small staff and some really great volunteers to get all this available. Um, it'll be a long time before everything is available online. Um, perhaps, you know, I'm sure it would take decades to get every single scrap of paper online, but, you know, we're working hard to make sure that we can, um, we can cover the collection and, and have indexes that correspond to the various records. Um, someone else asking if we have early business records, and yes, we do. I would say that we have the largest collection by far of any business records in the town of Gettysburg or Adams County. We have ledgers dating back to the late 1700s uh, from various businesses and, and uh, tradesmen, uh, blacksmiths, farmers, notebooks, anything you could imagine like that. And there is an index to that that we'll discuss here in a minute. Um, okay, good. So I think those are all the questions for now. Um, 
Tim had already mentioned that we have really three main types of, of uh, research requests that we get and things that we help with when, when folks come in. Um, and probably the most predominant is genealogy and family history, which, you know, Tim and I have both done a lot of, uh, of, uh, of work in and, and have assisted a lot of people as they come in. But we've also tried to put a lot of materials up here that would be helpful to you if you're working on your family tree. Um, we actually have a guide uh, to family history research at the Historical Society, kind of goes through all of the, the various um, facts that you would want to obtain about an ancestor and how to go about doing that. Um, you, you can download that, it's a free guide. Um, feel free to, to print it out. We actually have copies at the Historical Society as well. Um, we also, uh, so more broadly speaking, if, if you were to come into the Historical Society to research your family, one of the first things we would uh, put in front of you would be a family file if we have one. Um, we have hundreds of files that correspond to different surnames from throughout the county. These files contain anything from newspaper clippings to original historic documents related to the family. Um, in some cases, we have a file on one person if the person was famous enough or left us enough records. Like you can see, we have a file for Tilly Pierce, a famous citizen of the town. Um, who wrote about her experiences during the battle. Um, and you can keyword search all of these uh, finding aids um, on your computer if you press Control F, which is a, the search key. And then if we were to look up, uh, let's say uh, we want to look for Smith, um, we'll get a lot of Smiths. You can see Hawkins Smith, Messer Smith, uh, and, re and the regular Smith. Um, so uh, you can find just about um, any family name that we have a file for, we try to update this as regularly as we can. I um, mean, it's a great source. Of course, you'd have to come in and actually see the, the, uh, the substance of what is inside all these files, but at least um, in the meantime, you'll know that we may have something uh, that is applicable to what you're, you're trying to find. Um, any other comments on, on that, Tim, before we go on to the next one? Uh, we have collected these family files since the society, since about 1960. So there are um, interesting materials in the files. One of the things that genealogists look for in the files is correspondence with other genealogists. So over the years, people have sent us letters about their family or people are looking for a certain person or family or they know something about uh, a, a person in the, that family. So when you go to the family file, we generally have all the correspondence relating to genealogical research in those files from other people over the years. And like I said, a lot of it, it starts in the 1960s correspondence. Great. And we also have um, in a different part of our collection, we have uh, uh, two different types of, of other family records. Uh, one is family history. So either published or unpublished family histories. Uh, we have an index here on our website and the index discusses um, in many cases, gives the title of the publication. Um, of course, you know, you may have someone in your family who's written a family history. They're pretty common um, for people who do a lot of genealogy. I mean, we tried to collect all of them, regardless of whether they were uh, printed and five copies were made, or if it was an actual book um, that was widely distributed, which is, is the case in some uh, for some families. So we have this index. Again, it's also searchable. You can check the, the surnames. Um, and then when uh, the Historical Society is back open, you can come in and, and visit and, and uh, view some of these materials. And then, as I mentioned, uh, there's a third type of uh, family record that you could find, and it's called family collections. Uh, so this is actually a very new index. For some of you who've been to the Historical Society, you may not be familiar with these materials because they've just been organized and gathered in this format. Um, but we have collections, which we define a collection as a box of materials, no matter how small. Um, if it fits in a box by itself, we call it a collection. Um, and they're organized by uh, surname um, in this index. So uh, they're records that are not immediately accessible when you walk in. Somebody has to actually retrieve it for you from upstairs. Uh, but we have hundreds of these family collections. Um, and you can take a look at this as well on our website and search to see if anything applies. Uh, these collections could consist of anything uh, from, you know, account books in the case of, of uh, uh, business owners to letters and diaries. Um, and uh, some contain a lot of photographs, just about anything you could imagine. We, we're still adding to them today. Um, and we just actually a few months ago received a large family collection uh, from a, a, a donor here in Gettysburg. Um, so the, the family collections are, are excellent. Um, and, uh, you know, along the lines of 
you know, what are those basic facts that you want to establish about your ancestors um, when you're doing genealogical research? Of course, um, learning about the birth, marriage, and death date of your ancestor is really the place to start. And uh, we've talked about this in past videos, but there's a uh, a scarcity of actual official birth, death, and marriage records uh, from the state or the county. Uh, really, until 1906, these things were not recorded. Um, there's sporadic recordings um, of, of some locally, but not a lot. And so really, what we recommend is going to uh, baptismal records and uh, church uh, marriage records and church death records. And we have a large index of church records on our website. Um, if you know what church your ancestor attended. You can find out whether we have the records and what years we have the coverage for. Um, Tim, do you want to explain a little bit about how you would figure out what church your ancestor may have attended? We uh, a couple of things about the uh, church records we have. Um, Dr. Charles Gladfelter, uh, uh, you know, when he was younger, he always mentioned he thought about becoming a minister at one point. Um, and he uh, is associated with the Lutheran Church. And of course, the Adams County Historical Society leased the Lutheran Theological Seminary building for many years. And so we, over the years, uh, obtained copies of, uh, from the Lutheran Seminary and from Dr. Gladfelter, um, Lutheran church records from all over the state of Pennsylvania and Northern Maryland. I should also mention that a longtime vice president of the Adams County Historical Society was Frederick Weiser. And uh, he was a graduate of the Lutheran Seminary and an archivist over there for many years. And Elwood Christ, who was um, the collections manager here for many years, worked at the Lutheran uh, Theological Seminary. So we have not just Adams County records, but we have a large amount of uh, York County records and Franklin County records and Carroll County records and Frederick County records and um, uh, literally uh, all around the region that we were in. Um, and uh, the Adams County records, we have tried to obtain a copy of each of the records that exist uh, for the churches in the area. And there's quite a number of them. Now, uh, uh, of course, it, it's helpful if you're researching to know if your relative is a Lutheran or a Catholic or a Methodist, and sometimes it's not so easy. Sometimes families, uh, as time goes by, um, may switch their uh, religious affiliation, and uh, you have to keep up on that, or maybe someone Catholic marries someone who is Methodist, and, you know, um, the Methodist becomes Catholic, or the Catholic becomes Methodist, or uh, so on and so forth. Um, but what I generally do is I look in the newspaper for marriage announcements of the couple and see what the name of the minister is who married the couple. And then theoretically, um, you know, that's the church where they have their children baptized, the church they got married in, and it works time and time again. People are amazed by that. Oh, one thing I should mention is Dr. Charles Gladfelter actually created an index of ministers in Adams County and clergymen and ministries, it's called. And you can actually look up in alphabetic order the name of a minister, describe them in a marriage notice in the newspaper, and it'll tell you what church they're affiliated with. Yeah, we've got another great question from Craig. He's asking if we have any original blue blueprints or paperwork showing a layout of historic houses in Gettysburg. Um, we, you know, that is pretty rare. We have maybe just a few examples that I can think of, but, um, you know, we wish, I think Tim and I really wish that um, early, you know, architects and uh, uh, builders had kept better records because that is kind of one gap in the business type records that we have. We don't have a lot of drawings. I can think of just a couple examples. Um, but uh, yeah, and another question, do we have any uh, surviving pictures of Nellie Augenbaugh, one of the civilians in the town? I believe, is there, no. there is one, there isn't, okay. No picture. Uh, her no. sister, <laughs> Emma. We got her we sister, Emma. Her sister, there we go, yeah. Um, great, so um, let me uh, go back to, or I guess we're on the homepage now. So um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is estate files. This is something, that is an excellent resource at the Historical Society for anybody doing genealogy. Um, so obviously, uh, when someone dies, their estate is uh, recorded and their will is probated and all these documents are kept by the courthouse. But you may not know this, the Adams County Historical Society is 
kind of the county archives in Adams County. There is no independent county archives. Uh, we house a large portion of records for Adams County, um, and that includes estate files from 1800 and through the early 2000s. Um, and we have at the Wolf House everything from 1800 to 1989. So you can view the original uh, will and estate file of anyone uh, who who owned property in Adams County or other uh, personal estate that was uh, valuable enough to have a, uh, a file at the courthouse. Uh, of course, a lot of people died in test state, meaning they did not have a will. Uh, there are still papers usually, um, but uh, we have found that unfortunately it's very heavily male <laughs> um, in, in the records. There, uh, It's, it's uh, a lot harder to find women in these estate files uh, due to how property ownership um, was was structured at the time, although there are a considerable amount. Uh, did you want to add something there, Tim? Yeah, um, we should mention that uh, the previous record we talked about, the church record, that index was created by three or four volunteers over the course of a few years. And I should mention the uh, church index was created by Conrad Richter, largely, and a team that he put together, including, uh, I should mention, Dale Molina. She's a current volunteer and worked very hard on it. Um, a few other people were involved. I didn't think about uh, uh, giving all the names of all the people, but the one we're looking at right now, um, uh, Mavis Sterner, Starner, I'm sorry, um, she uh, is really was worked very hard on this particular index of the estate papers to make it into a format that we could then uh, turn into something you could search digitally. And also, right. uh, I should mention the wits of Littlestown. I always just call them the wits. Um, uh, Jim, Jim Witt and his wife, they worked very hard on this also. And, um, you know, we could not run our society or create the resources we have for people that are coming in to do research if it wasn't for a large staff of volunteers that come in and help us with these, uh, you know, these indexes. Right. We have, yeah, and if, you, and if you're interested. Just, just, to yeah, say, right. just to point out too, also, we have um, currently, um, we have a couple indexes that are almost done and we're uh, getting ready to uh, put up that people have worked on for the last few months. And, um, uh, you know, so we have a current staff of volunteers that are continue to create new resources and indexes. We've got a great question here. Um, do most cemeteries have a plot or grave locator available? And do we have access since many gravestones are missing or illegible? You want to take that one, Tim? I would say, in my experience, most cemeteries do not have a list of where people are buried or a plot map which uh, sometimes is disturbing. I wonder, you know, a lot of cemeteries look, look around and you see a current burial on an old cemetery. And I'm always like, how do they know that they're not burying that person on another person who just didn't have a stone or the stone is missing now? Um, so my experience, um, if the cemetery is still active and you can still be buried there, usually there's someone in charge of the cemetery and that person must have a working knowledge of who is buried there. But as far as we here are concerned at the Adams County Historical Society, we have the burial records pretty completely for Evergreen Cemetery. But we don't have plot plans or burial records beyond tombstone inscriptions for the large majority of Adams County cemeteries. So uh, obviously, a large amount of people were buried without stones. And the church records actually often have um, burial records in them that tell you when somebody was buried in the cemetery. So they're the best thing to look at, a church cemetery's burial records, if the person doesn't have a stone. Right. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, so a couple other, uh, a little bit more obscure, we're getting down the list through some of these really critical sources. Uh, we do have a list of newspapers that we have on microfilm at the Historical Society. Um, microfilm is kind of a, a dying art. Um, so a lot of newspapers you can now find through websites like Ancestry.com and Newspapers.com, which we really uh, recommend. Uh, but we do have a list of what's available. Um, we have some newspapers from York County as well. Um, and we do have a, a complete run of the New York Times through the Civil War period as well. So if any of that is interesting to you, you know, we, we recommend coming in probably better in, the, in this day and age to start with a digital search. Uh, but uh, Tim and I will uh, often find, you know, that certain periods are not 
well indexed and the images are unclear and we have to go to the original microfilm to view an article. Um, another, probably, this might be my favorite index that we have. It is the criminal case file index. So you can check uh, here to see um, <laughs> what your ancestors did um, in Adams County and uh, if they got caught for it. So uh, we have a lot of fun. I think Tim and I have had several cases where we have um, had a lot, a lot of fun uh, showing some of these criminal case records uh, to people um, who are researching their ancestors at the Historical Society. So you can see um, we have uh, uh, the, the criminal charges for each. Uh, here's a, a female bastard child, assault and battery, breaking and entering. Um, it's uh, just uh, fascinating stuff. Um, a lot of these records are very early. You can see uh, they start in the 1820s and 30s and go up through about the turn of the century. Um, but I highly recommend checking to see um, if any of your ancestors are on this, uh, this ledger. Um, and they all correspond to original uh, county records that are, again, on permanent loan to us from Adams County. Um, and uh, this is a new index that we put up just recently. So uh, you can check that out um, and uh, see what you can find. We also have some probation records from the early 1900s, um, which were uh, files kept by the district attorney. Um, so very interesting uh, materials here. I know Tim's done some research on um, on murder and execution in Adams County. We may put together a program about that here in the future, uh, but this is one of my favorite indexes. Um, so let's move on. I want to make sure we cover as much as we can. Or did you, Tim, why don't you go ahead with, with your point on that? I just wanted to mention that in, you know, my course of helping people research, if your relative was an honest God-fearing individual that had a happy family and never broke the law, we're not going to find anything about them. You need to have a criminal or someone that, you know, did something wrong or, you know, to, to find stuff. We, 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 the records are much better if they're a bad person and if they're a good person. That's right. I think that, yes, we we often will find lots of great newspaper articles if your ancestors were not on the up and up. So, <laughs> so you can check this index out. Even if you don't have local ancestors, it is quite an interesting uh, record. So, yeah. And let me mention it, you know, I thought about, I think this would be very interesting. I thought about writing a book called The Black Sheep of the Family and list all the types of records you can look at if your relative was a black sheep. We can find out if they committed fornication and bastardy or, you know, if they were in the insane uh, ward of the almshouse. We have lots of records for that kind of stuff. <laughs> yes, we, we sure do. Um, okay, so moving on, uh, we have uh, another index that I really like. Uh, it's an index of tavern licenses. So if your ancestor was involved with keeping a tavern, um, even if they're not really well known, some people kept the tavern just for a year or two, uh, may have been owned by somebody else, but they came in and served as tavern keeper. Um, there's a lot of, uh, actually there are you know, quite a few women, Rachel Arnold, uh, you can see you know, it's not just men who are running taverns. Um, but uh, this is another great index giving the name of the tavern keeper, the years that they had the tavern, and the location of the tavern. So you can see some of the more famous ones. I'll go to Bream, Francis Bream, which is Black Horse Tavern, just west of Gettysburg. A shout out to any of our friends from the Bream family who may be watching. Um, the Black Horse Tavern is one of the oldest taverns in the county, um, and uh, it was originally kept by the Mc McClellan family, I believe, right, Tim? Yep, there it is. And we do have the McClellans, the records going back to 1788. Um, so just because, seven, okay. 1762. Oh, 1762. Okay, I see that, yes. Uh, so, you know, that's another point to make. You know, just because Adams County was formed in 1800 doesn't mean we don't have older records. Um, we have a lot of records that date back to the mid uh, to late 1700s. I think the earliest paper document I've seen in our collection is from the 1730s. Um, it's a, a deed uh, for a property in Adams County. I, I wanted to mention that we have for the early taverns from like 1800 up until about 1850, we have the tavern license applications. And anytime a tavern, uh, an owner would be applying for a tavern license or a person, they would have to have uh, people sign for them. So many of these applications are signed by people who live around the tavern or you know, or uh, our friends of the person that 
rent the tavern and it have 10 or 15 signatures on them. One of our volunteers actually went through all the tavern license applications and made an index of all the people who have signed the applications. And we don't have that online, but you can come here and see it. And a lot of people get into this, will find your relative's name, and then they're able to see for the first time their relative signature from the 1830s on an original document. Now, obviously, sometimes it's just an X, but you can actually look at some of these early signatures on the tavern license. Great. Yeah, so uh, to cap things off, we've got two more things that are kind of directly related to genealogy. Uh, one is death certificates from 1852 to 1855. Um, now, it seems like a very obscure record, and it is. I don't know if we actually have an explanation for why, for a brief period of time, um, Adams County kept official death uh, certificates. Um, we've noticed that there are some gaps. This is not everybody who died between these uh, three or four years, um, but you can uh, occasionally find a really um, rare record here. Um, and if somebody's dying in the 1850s, there's a good chance they were born in the mid 1700s. So um, it's an excellent source uh, to find uh, death certificates for your ancestors. And it actually gives the cause of death, which I think is really excellent. Um, so that's one more thing. And then I, I wanted to just briefly mention, um, for those of you interested in black history, uh, we actually created a, a really excellent database uh, based on records from the Historical Society of all of the known burials in Link Gettysburg's uh, only existing black cemetery, Lincoln Cemetery. Um, we set up a database in collaboration with Gettysburg College and the Gettysburg Black History Museum. Um, and uh, you can actually search and let's just do one, uh, somebody more famous, let's do Basil Biggs, one of the, the more famous uh, African-American community members here in Adams County. Uh, you can see not just uh, Biggs, uh, but anyone who uh, has the word Biggs in the, in the description um, on their individual page on this site. So here is Basil Biggs, if you scroll down, you can click on it and there's a picture of every single headstone in the cemetery. A uh, picture of the death certificate for Basil Biggs, any other newspaper articles, that's his obituary. And uh, we have some basic information about Biggs that we were able to, to figure out here. So, um, so I highly recommend checking out this database. Uh, we do need a subscription um, to get on this. It's free to set an, set an account up, uh, but uh, we hope you'll check this uh, source out uh, if you're interested in the black community here in Adams County. Um, so that's another another great source. I think now we'll move on to uh, property research and a few of the the um, the finding aids and indexes that we have here that might be helpful to your to you in your search. Uh, first, we put up a, a guide to property research. Um, we did do a webinar on property research about a month ago. You can find it on YouTube. Uh, but here's an additional guide that could help you uh, when uh, researching some basic information about a house or. Uh, other property, it could be a building um, in the county, and how you go about finding out uh, things like the chain of title and uh, census records for who was living at that property. Um, but we do have some, some resources um, under this category, property research, uh, and one is an index to uh, deeds uh, of Adams County. And uh, actually, there's a website now through Adams County uh, government where you can actually go on and view original deeds. You do have to have a subscription and it's uh, pay per view. Um, so we've put this index up, this free index, so that you can get an idea of what's there uh, before you either visit us or visit uh, their site. I and mean, we do have access to their website at the Historical Society. Um, so this is a list of, of deeds. Um, it includes some unrecorded deeds. Uh, the Historical Society um, has taken deeds that were not officially recorded with the courthouse. Um, and we've mixed those into this index so that you know um, everything that we have access to at the Historical Society. And this index uh, goes back to 1800. Actually, you can see some unrecorded deeds prior to that. Um, and I believe you know, we, we have the original deeds up through the 1930s, um, and then we have access to all more modern deeds uh, through that website that the county has set up. Um, so property research is, um, is really important to what we do. People are always interested in the history of their house or their their farm. I mean, we're we're always uh, really excited to to help people make discoveries on that front. So let me go to the next one here, and I'll turn it over to Tim because he is kind of the expert on uh, tax records at the Historical Society. So we received them from the county years ago in the 1970s, but uh, we do have 
all of the original tax lists from each municipality in Adams County from about 1800 up until about 1859. <clears throat> and we put a little index here of what we have. Now, like for instance, if you live in New Oxford, uh, early on that was Berwick Township. So you have to look into Berwick Township tax records. And then eventually they created Oxford Township. And then of course, New Oxford was then, um, I think New Oxford Townships, uh, 1849, is that right? And then, um, 1874, 1875, I see you brought it up, uh, it is when New Oxford has its own individual tax. So, um, you know, this helps you know what to look in for your property values, and you can trace your property values through the years. Now, it is tedious to get each individual book out and look at them. Um, but, uh, and, and the, for the most part, the tax records of Adams County have not been indexed. Um, it would be a massive project because of course the handwriting is difficult to read in many instances. Um, and many instances, people who, uh, you know, at the state you can look at, um, they, they said they microfilmed all our records, but you can't digitize, you know, cursive so and make it readable. So, so there's really no indexes to them. And it's helpful to know uh, before you look at these, what township or town you need to look in uh, to find uh, the tax. What I think there's 26 townships in Adams County and maybe um, 15 incorporated boroughs. So there's a large amount of places where your relative could live within Adams County. Uh, one of our volunteers years ago put together something called an index to the septennial census. Every seven years, septennial, they did an uh, sort of a list of the taxpayers of Pennsylvania by township and they listed where that uh, person lived. So you could look in that index, it's very helpful early on and you could see where you're all to live. Oh, we have that on here somewhere, don't we? The I'm not sure if we have that one yet, but we're, we're working yeah. on it. <laughs> where you're all have lived and then you can look in the tax records for those years and find the property. It's very, very helpful. And we do have a question. Um, a Victor's asking if we have a deed for the Abraham Bryan farm. Do you know, Tim, if we do offhand? Oh, off the top of my head, I do not recall if we do. I, well, I think Abraham Bryan only owned the property for like uh, 15 years, like uh, from the uh, uh, 1850s up until the early 1870s, something like that. Um, I do not recall off the top of my head if we have, uh, if we do, it would be a, uh, a later deed. Right. And Don's asking if there's a list of soldiers who died and were buried at Camp Letterman Hospital. Um, there are some records of the burials at uh, Camp Letterman, and they're in a, a box on the shelf in the library at the Gettysburg National Military Park. Uh, years ago, someone uh, and Greg Coco actually copied the records from someone and then made them available. And I do remember seeing in there, at least they have a list of people who uh, died at Camp Letterman. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know if you could find that list anywhere online. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we don't uh, have the list. I, I don't know if they recorded the people who were removed to the National Cemetery uh, from Camp Letterman. But uh, at the park, I think they have kind of a list of what he's referring to. Right. Then a couple other things. We have an index of maps that we have at the Historical Society. Um, so it kind of gives you an, an idea of uh, what exists. If you're looking into your property, a great thing to do is to check historic maps and see how it's labeled, what the buildings look like, um, and then you can see how things have changed over the years. Uh, so that's just a, sh a short index on maps. Mm -hmm. And then this is another great uh, resource that, that Tim and I use quite a bit. Um, and it's a an index to all of the houses in Gettysburg that have had a historic house report done. Um, so the Historic Building Survey Committee, which I believe one of our, um, our former employees who's now deceased, Woody Christ, had a big part in this. Um, basically, a, a large amount of research was created um, on many of the houses in Gettysburg in terms of documenting the, the chain of title, the ownership, and the actual physical features of the building. So you can look through and see if you happen to own a historic house in Gettysburg. Uh, you can see if there's a study on that house, and uh, we are working to... Uh, eventually get all these reports digitized so that you can see the actual, um, the actual documents. Um, 
So now moving on, uh, we have one more category I wanted to, to go over uh, for a few minutes. We already talked about past perfect, um, but we do have some other kind of odds and ends collections. Uh, like Tim mentioned, you know, of the three things that we do, property, history, genealogy, we have that big third category that kind of is all encompassing. And it's any county history related topic, uh, anything related to Gettysburg, the Battle of Gettysburg, especially the civilians of Adams County and how they dealt with the events uh, of the Civil War. Um, and we do have a, an index um, of civilian accounts uh, at the Historical Society. Um, it's not a complete index. Um, we learned that today, <laughs> but it's near complete. Um, and we're gonna be updating it in the, in the near future. Uh, but it lists uh, all of the citizens and uh, visitors to the battlefield who were civilians who wrote about uh, their experiences and the conditions of the town and the battlefield following um, the, the battle in 1863, as well as the Gettysburg Address. We have, I would, uh, guarantee you to be the largest collection of firsthand accounts of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Um, so you can peruse through that list and uh, see uh, what may apply to your research. You never know if one of your ancestors um, has uh, a story uh, of what had taken place uh, uh, during the, the Battle of Gettysburg. Um, a couple other things here. We have an index of books in our Civil War library. So we have a large library of books pertaining to uh, specifically the Battle of Gettysburg, but more broadly the Civil War, um, including a lot of rare uh, regimental histories and uh, early Gettysburg tourist publications. Um, and so you can search those books and see what we may have in our collection. I know that we have a few books by Tim Smith, <laughs> The Farnsworth House and the Battle of Gettysburg, The Story of Lee's Headquarters. Um, so you can, you can see all of Tim's books um, at the Historical Society. Uh, check those out if you haven't already read them. I highly recommend the, the John Burns book. That's my favorite. <laughs> um, and uh, just a couple other uh, miscellaneous sources. And then I just want to end with something new that we're doing, a new project that we have. Um, we have an index of all the records that Adams County has given us on permanent loan. Um, so someone mentioned this in the beginning of the program, but we have the almshouse records. Uh, we have some select birth records from the 1890s and early 1900s, bottlers licenses, um, uh, we have coroner's records, we have uh, the criminal case files we already mentioned, election returns, just about anything you could imagine. So if you're interested in the community, uh, various organizations and, and government uh, divisions and record uh, groups, you can, you can view all those materials. A lot of this has never really been indexed at a name level. Uh, so we're hoping to um, expand and, and, and continue to make these things available. The first step when you have such a large group of materials is just to get some sort of a coherent index together. And this is what the first step looks like. Then from there, you can dig into each of these record groups, pull out all the names, and then eventually uh, one day have everything digitized. Uh, now for now, the originals um, are at the Historical Society. Um, and that's what one thing I really like about the Historical Society is you could be looking through a box that hasn't been looked through in decades um, and has never been really indexed or scanned. Um, so we, that's a blessing and a curse if you're doing research. <laughs> Um, one thing I wanted to add here before we move on to, to the last topic, um, we do have a guide to um, other types of research. And so you can, you can look through and see what we recommend in terms of researching uh, the Battle of Gettysburg, the civilian experience, um, as well as any other local history topic. Um, and I should have already mentioned this. Actually, Tim, if you want to just talk for a second, what are subject files and what are subject collections? What, how, how exactly is that organized and, and how is that helpful for, for researchers? Well, um, you know, in early historical society, again, they collected materials by subject. Now, to this today, we tend to, if we get an original document in like, um, you know, um, something from what, from Adams County Television or something, we might put it in a collection box and call it the Adams County Television Collection. but. Uh, well, before we had large collections like that, we put things in files. And so we have um, subject files. And the subject files uh, are topics relating to Adams County. Now, there could be an Adams County history topic if we scroll down, like, um, uh, you know, uh, let's see what, like, there's Adams County's Civil War Centennial, uh, like a, the 1963 100th anniversary of the battle. Um, but a lot of times they're businesses or they're um, a charitable organization or, uh, you know, a, a AAA. 
um, in Adams County, or it's a history of a town. There, there could be any number of random subjects. And over the years, uh, we've had information on a subject and somebody created a file on that subject. And so you never really know what's going to be in the files, but um, we have this index of the files that we have. So to, make, to supplement uh, searching on past perfect for a certain topic, you can hopefully find that we have a topic, um, a vertical file on that topic, and you can look at it specifically. And then, of course, we, we have subject collection um, index. So, so we mentioned that uh, we have upstairs a large room in which we have a lot of family collections and are organized for us by accession number order. So they're from 0001 to the present day collections 2020.020 or whatever it might be. Um, they're organized in order. And then we have indexes uh, telling you what the, the name of the collection is. So we have family collections and we also have collections dealing with uh, subjects, historical subjects or businesses. And again, you can see the Battle of Gettysburg, 1938 reunions. We have a whole collection of information just on the 38 uh, reunion, 75th anniversary of the battle. You can see we have a few things on the Orangeville Vocational School um, uh, or the Bigelowville Borough Council we can, we can see there or Cam Colt or um, just not too long ago, I, I processed the collection, uh, the Carroll uh, Garden Club, uh, uh, Carroll, Carroll Valley Garden Club. Uh, so it's the records of this organization that's, uh, that, you know, recently they gave us the organizational records of that. Uh, Cigar Makers of McSherry's Town was an early collection. Uh, so we have lots of different collections. We have a huge collection on Company K, First Pennsylvania Reserves. Uh, a Civil War regiment, uh, a company from organizing Gettysburg from Adams County. Remember, there was a monument placed to this unit in the square of Gettysburg in the 1980s. And this collection of material was um, actually donated to us by the committee who put up that monument in the square. Great. Thanks, Tim. Yeah. So. Uh, just uh, to, to end, uh, I want I want to, well, first, let me point out, we do have a, a little video. Uh, it was made a few years ago, but we kind of walked through the building. So if you're curious about what our collection looks like, you can watch that video at the bottom of the screen here. Um, but I wanted to just spotlight a something new that we have. Uh, we just started, and you may have seen it on Facebook, but if you go to visit us at the top, the tab at the top, there's a, a tab called Walter and Janice Lane Photographic Collection. What we've done is uh, we have thousands and thousands of photographs taken in the 1940s and 50s in Gettysburg. Um, and we've put a large portion of those photographs up on the photo sharing site Flickr. Um, and you can actually browse by year and look at some really incredible photographs of Gettysburg uh, from actually people and uh, scenes in Gettysburg and Adams County. And if you're wondering, how are you gonna find something you know, related to your family? We've also put up on our website an index, uh, click here to view the collection and above it is before, please search the, the index here. So we have an index and you can search uh, for anyone uh, in your family. If you're a Smith, you can search for Smiths. Um, I don't think there'd be anybody with my name, but let's see who's watching right now. We've got a Walker, <laughs> I see we have, one reference to Walker, we've got, um, oh, our friend Ron Gottwald, I think. I don't see any Gottwalds on the index, but you can search anybody um, who you may have been related to. You never know if your own photo, we've had people say, oh, wow, my eighth grade uh, class photo is on here. So uh, we recommend checking that resource out and we're, we're trying to work as hard as we can to get things digitized um, and up uh, for, for you all to enjoy. Um, a lot of places really, you know, overcharge for every image that you see. And we, we wanna try to get as much as we can out there um, so that you can see all of the, the treasures that we have in our collection. Um, and along those lines, I wanted to thank Patricia and Craig and Patty for their donations. Uh, if you have uh, a minute to click the donate a button at the bottom of this uh, live video, we'd really appreciate any support you'd be willing to give us, whether it's a, a dollar or five dollars, ten dollars or more. Um, you know, we, we do all that we can with a limited uh, budget and, uh, you know, we are working really hard to, to continue to keep uh, all these incredible materials preserved, over a million items. Um, and we are working hard to 
uh, plan for a new location that would allow us to, to get our whole collection under one roof. Now it's a little bit spread out at some different storage sites. Uh, we'd get it all under one roof and uh, open a, a museum so that the county can come back and, and visitors as well can enjoy the, the incredible artifacts that we have and, and see the full story of Adams County from its earliest days uh, when dinosaurs roamed around the county. We actually have a footprint of a dinosaur in a rock, which we uh, will probably do more on in a future video. But we have everything from dinosaurs all the way through uh, hats that belong to Mamie Eisenhower. We have a Gettysburg Address program that was handed out that day. Um, we have the original plot map of Gettysburg on Animal Hide, just really incredible materials and they deserve to be in front of you, uh, accessible and, uh, and uh, open. So we are, we're working hard on that every day. Uh, Tim is working on a script for a new museum that we hope to open. Um, and uh, we're further along than, than you might think. Um, and so we're, we're hoping to announce something around uh, the beginning of next year or late this year. Uh, but in the meantime, we really appreciate your support. Um, we, we hope you'll, you'll uh, take this chance to, to join the Historical Society on our website. You can uh, click the Join Us tab. You can become a member. Um, and when we reopen, we hope to see you all back uh, in the archives. Um, and so until next week, uh, we, we hope uh, you're, you're staying healthy and safe. And I did want to make a quick plug. Our program next week is going to be on Rock Creek, uh, the history of Rock Creek. It's one of uh, Tim's favorite programs. I think he just found out that he's doing that program next week. Um, <laughs> but uh, if he had read the schedule, <laughs> uh, we will be doing Rock Creek, which is one of my favorite presentations that, that Tim has given. Um, the history of, of the creek and all of the incredible things that happened, the Battle of Gettysburg, obviously, but then all of the earlier history out there um, and also uh, what hap what's happened since then um, along the creek out there. So we hope you'll join us. That'll be 7 p.m. next Thursday evening. Uh, until then, I hope everybody stays uh, healthy and uh, happy and uh, please take the, a chance to uh, go over to our website and like us on Facebook as well so you can stay up to date with, with what's going on. Um, so thanks again for joining us tonight and uh, we're excited to to keep doing these programs for you. Thanks.